Come on in. Grab your favorite beverage, maybe today echinacea tea with lemon, and join me. Welcome. Make yourself comfortable. I'm Bonnie Yost. This is 4x4 Healing, and I'm a physical therapist, speaker, and author who helps people transform physical limitation and deep internal and relational pain into profound potential so that they can live in joy and vibrant health. How do you feel? Today, as I speak, our nation and our world is facing and dealing with a pandemic viral um, event. And it's so easy to get caught up in the panic when people are hearing threats and dangers and crowds are anxious and panic-stricken and the shelves in the stores are empty. Have you felt that way? I've had to fight that off as well. But panic doesn't help anyone. So today I'd like to share with you, it came to pass. It didn't come to stay. We need to prevent panic. Our perspective is based on our own personal lives. Maybe you, like I have, experienced a feeling that no one else has felt the pain or the financial burdens or losses or sleepless nights or loneliness like I have. Maybe you have thought things like this event have never happened before. But if we take time and check the facts, we find that we're not alone in our experience. It seems to me that every generation faces some kind of great challenge, great trial, some crisis. As I reflect back, my grandparents lived through World War I. They also lived through the epidemic, pandemic of the Spanish flu in 1918 when my parents were babies. That flu, I think, yeah, killed 20 to 50 million people throughout the world. And to have a young family at that time, I can't imagine their concerns and their, their fear, but it probably reflects what we're feeling today. They also lived through the financial losses and challenges of the Great Depression in the 1930s. My parents lived through World War II. They also endured and lived through the Asian, pandem Asian flu pandemic in 1956 when I was a young child and my, my siblings were younger. They also, at that time, endured the polio outbreak, which 90 to 95 percent of people who got polio died. Well, I thank God because when I was two years old, I contracted polio, and I thank God that I didn't have to live in an iron lung, and that I've had no residual symptoms since I was two. But that is a very scary time. So it's easy to panic. It's easy to get caught up in that, that fervor of high emotion, and fear is always can take us captive very quickly and is always a uh, hindrance, not a help. So, we're going to cover these things today, and I thank you for those of you who have given me comments. You can see what we're going to cover, and let's just get started. How do we prevent, then, panicking? Well, remember that panic is a feeling. Fear is a feeling very strong, but one of the first things we can do to turn anxiety into action is to sort out the facts, but the first thing we need to do is to take care of the feeling. So, review the stress management tools that I shared with you before. First thing I would do, and I've been doing, is BMW. Breathe, melt, and wiggle. Make sure that I don't go into the fight, flight, freeze problem. I also need to stop, drop, and pray. I need to give it to God. He's the one who knows what's going on. He's the protector. He's protected you and I from things that we know and things that we don't have any idea about. 
There have been dangers that we have gone through life and God has protected us. So let's be thankful for that and recognize that He's in control. So let's fall back into His arms and trust that. In that process of using those stress management tools and releasing to God, we receive peace and clarity of thinking. We also then can start to sort out our perspective. Let's look at the messages. Are we hearing messages, again remember, threats and crises make news. If you're having a wonderful, happy life, that's not going to be on the news. So what kind of messages will you be receiving? You'll be receiving statistics and true news. You'll be receiving opinion and projections. And they may be or may not be true, but they're what-ifs. I don't spend any time on what-ifs because it's just a waste of time and energy. So, sort out the messages. Are they full of fear and helplessness, dependency and hopelessness? Get your delete button out and say, you know what, I'm not going to worry about that, that's in God's hands. It's something I cannot control, so I'm going to delete it. Or, are the inf or is the information that you're receiving factual, because I verified it, yes, this is what's happening. Is it helpful direction so that I can do something about it? And if I can do something about it, that's what I can control. And so I will do that. And that includes, how can I help others? It's been interesting to see that many new volunteer services and businesses have grown in this time of need to get supplies to people who can't get out, to, to meet the needs electronically, or to do deliveries. So it's how can you help yourself by washing your hands frequently, making sure that you follow good hygiene for cough and want hands, but also, how can you help others? Remember what fear can stand for. Maybe you've heard this as well. That fear stands for false evidence appearing real. So, if the evidence is real, take precautions. Be wise, but not fearful. If the evidence is false, and it appears real, check on what it's doing to you. Is it making you feel helpless and dependent and hopeless? That's a time to delete. If there's nothing you can do about it, why are you wasting energy worrying over it? So today we're going to end with Psalm 91, 1 through 3, and Philippians 4, 6 through 9. Psalm 91, 1 through 3 says, Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety, he is my God, and I trust him. For he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. Do you believe that? It give, makes you sleep much more peacefully when you do. Philippians 4, 6 through 9 says, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand, and I can attest to that. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true, what is honorable, what is right and pure and lovely, and admirable. Think about these things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me, everything you heard from me, and this is Paul speaking, and saw me doing, then the God of peace will be with you. And Paul was a follower of Jesus in his time. So let's end with prayer. 
Abba Father, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, thank you, Almighty God, for who you are. Thank you that you know and hold together each star in the universe and every atom and subatomic particle. You deeply love and care for my friend and the details of my friend's concerns, pain, and burdens as you care for mine. Thank you for always being there for my friend and for me, never leaving us. I thank you, Father, that you strengthen and comfort and guide us if we'll just let you. Turn our hearts and our eyes to you during difficult trials and times. You know the future. We do not. So I thank you that you are the only one sufficient to meet not only our needs, but to guide us into your will, your way, and your word at the appropriate time. So I thank you, Father, for that. Remind us to release our cares to you and trust in you, Lord. Please help my friend and me to remember that nothing is going to happen today that you and I together can't handle. And this is something that I keep in my home. So nothing today is going to happen that you and I together can't handle. It's even right side up. Yay! I hope you have, I hope this helps. You stay calm and stay in the perfect care of the Lord. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for your comments and, and following. Bye-bye. Talk to you later.